people on, on Twitter, and and that's basically, you know, nobody's ever going to respond to you, and if they do, they think you're an ass or whatever. Um, I just want to say, I think what you do is absolutely outstanding, and what you oh, do with you, man. attacking you. a show, um, and then, you know, basically chasing a dream with Lead Up and, and doing everything like that, I mean, you're basically living a life that I dream of. Oh, well, thank you. I, I assure you the reality is, 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 uh, is no wonderland, but I'm having a fucking blast. I'm sort of blindly stumbling through it, trying to figure it out, and I will say I'm markedly happier now than I have been in the past, so I feel like I'm doing something right. And uh, it's been really touching and really difficult and tragic all at the same time to see the, you know, the feedback having left something like Attack of the Show and left P4 where my heart and soul was poured into the into the foundation of that place for 10 years. Um, to leave that behind has been incredibly trying emotionally and professionally. And yet um, it seems to be pointing to like, oh, yeah, this was the right decision for so many reasons. And it sucks that people don't like Attack now or they'll, they'll tweet me and say that. And that breaks my heart because I, I built that baby and I, I, I left behind a team that is so amazing that was really like family, truly like my family in L.A. So it, it hurts to see that, but it's also incredibly uh, empowering, you know, and it's flattering as well that people go, yeah, we love the show, but, man, we don't want to love it now that you're not there. And it's, um, it's always nice to hear, man, so I appreciate that. That's, that, that. That feedback is always, like, that resonates, so thank you. Well, you know, and, and, you know, I'm just going to let you know that that's a complete lie because really the only reason that we have you on here is because I want Sarah Underwood's number. <laughs> and if I had it, I would give it, but she's never given me the time of day, let alone her phone number. <laughs> Actually, uh, that's you know, not true. Um, I mean, we, we, we bang constantly, so I'm always texting her, just let, asking if she wants it, does she need it now, how long does she need it this time. She loves it. She can't get enough of me. Uh <laughs> Oh, um, I'm actually joined here by uh, by my co-host. His name's Andre. Hey, Andre. So, <laughs> and he's and he's basically in stitches right now. So, oh, cool, cool, man. Well, um, how does this work with you guys? Have we are, have we started? Are we going to start? How do how do you guys want to do it? Uh, honestly, I've actually been recording since uh, you actually got on the phone because uh, everything. Oh, good. Right well, let me just say it one more time in case you didn't get it in. I bang Sarah Underwood relentlessly, constantly. No, sorry. <laughs> no, we're gonna um, we're gonna put that in when we play. You know, I will say that not not that you even asked it, but Sarah is is hands down one of the coolest chicks I know. Um, sadly, I have never even attempted to round first base with her. Um, but she, in addition to being you know, oh, Esquire's hottest woman of 2012, and being so fun and, and easy to work with uh, as a show host, but like personally, she's the kind of girl that you'd be like, hey, this bar has sawdust and peanut shells on the floor, but they're, they're, there's a game on and there's cheap beer, and she would be the first in line and screaming to, to, to be a part of that experience. And so the dichotomy of, oh, you, you've you been voted by a major publication and the Internet as the hottest woman of the year, plus you're down to get, a, you know, it's like need a tetanus shot to hang out at a dive bar and sing karaoke. <laughs> awesome. And you don't often get those two tastes together with a woman. So um, I have nothing but the highest praise for her. That, that's really that's really good to hear because um, it, it's you know how like sometimes people leave shows or something like that and then before you know it they're blasting other people you know that that, sure. that were on it so I mean that that's really kind of cool to hear that uh, that you guys actually did get along and that you know that's oh absolutely and and really and it's not bullshit like I if there's one thing that I'm authentic about it's my feelings about other people and products so I would I would either avoid it or be brutally honest, and I have no problem saying that, you know, everybody that came through that building, for the most part, was just just so awesome, and that's what kept me there for so long, is that people were so incredible. So, not that not the tangent or anything, but that's, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's a special one. Nice, nice. Well, uh, why don't we get into uh, some questions, and then obviously we can edit through whatever. Um, first off, for people that don't know what Lead Up is, why don't you explain that the best way that you can? Okay, first of all, if, uh, I guess first off, if someone doesn't know what lead-up is, they can go fuck themselves. How dare they? You know what? It's called the Internet, you asshole. Get on there. Use the Google. Bing it if you're a dick. Ask Jeeves if you really need to. Figure it out. It's not hard. Type it in. No. Um, lead-up is... Now that I've alienated everybody, lead-up is... <laughs> I'm out of here. No. <laughs> now, lead-up is something that I've been wanting to do for a long while, um, probably for over five years. 
Um, originally, I wanted to... There were two things. I'll take a step back. There were two things. One, I wanted to tour Attack of the Show. I thought Attack of the Show would kill with college audiences as a live thing to do on stage. You have some guests, you play some videos, you sort of celebrate pop culture and internet culture, and you do it in a live setting. Um, and I was told no for a myriad of reasons for several years. Um, two... I loved going to conventions. I loved Comic Con. I loved CES. I loved E3. I loved concerts. I loved going to you know the music events. And when I go to these events, I see the same types of people at every single event. And I go, wait a minute. These same groups love video games. They love technology. They love music. They love pop culture. Uh, wait a minute. Why are we only getting together at a few tentpole events? You know, two or three times a year that are uh, you know usually in the same geographic area. Why are we doing this when we all appreciate it? We all love it. Why don't we bring it all together under one roof? And it was a very, very lofty goal, and we threw a sort of beta test of that experiment and that experience, if you will. And we did it at Club Nokia here in Los Angeles. And, man, we had over a 1,000 people show up. We had podcasts and panel interviews on stage. We played games with the audience. We were throwing out prizes and video games to the crowd. We had a little VIP meet and greet. We had an old-school arcade set up in the crowd. We had cosplayers and photo booths. And we just sort of brought everything together under one roof for one night for a few hours, a little mini nerd carnival. And we did it in L.A. because it was our backyard and it was really easy to do. Um, not easy to do, I should say, but logistically it was easier to do, having it be so accessible to us. And we knew right away. The feedback was in. People had a great time. They really enjoyed the show. They got a bunch of cool stuff. And then we started seeing the feedback right away. Hey, man, why isn't this in Chicago? Why aren't you bringing this to Philadelphia? Where's the love for Texas, et cetera? And so we knew right away this was an event we had to replicate. We had to take it on the road, and that's what we're doing in just a few weeks. Well, all, all I know is that Andre and I are going, and we cannot wait. Awesome, man. And you're going to have a terrible time. Your tickets are non-refundable. Screw you. We got the money, but thanks. I, I'm, I'm just going to go up, punch you in the face on stage, and then run out and, you know, and, and scream like a little girl when I leave. Oh, just, just make sure the cameras like are running. running. Just so you just know. Make sure, just make sure we get paid for the podcast. Um, no, I, I'm so psyched that you guys are coming, and I really like it. You know, we're just trying to we're just trying to throw a fucking nerd party. Like, can I cuss? I just did. I'm sorry. You, just, you can't because you know we are radio, but uh, you know I, I'll, I'll cut that out or I'll bleep it or I'll throw something funny in there. So you got it. Throw throw an eagle scream over it, or um, you know, like a, an Asian anime girl crying because there's too many tentacles stuffed into two little holes. <laughs> See, now that can be said. It's just only certain amounts of people will understand that. And those are the people that I want at lead up. Exactly. If you have a technical fetish, if you have a hentai collection that can only be measured in terabytes, come on out to lead up. <laughs> you know, and the, you know what the funny thing is? This university is a Catholic university. Yeah, so, I know. So, <laughs> like, hentai? What's that? So, but yeah, the good yeah, Lord, the good Lord wants everybody to have an incredibly vast knowledge of hentai, so look it up. 